the testing operations are really, really important, and uh, we want to have them. So where is the problem? And we, we need to answer the, our, uh, ask ourselves where is the problem, because as you probably know, developers love to solve, uh, love to solve problems which does not exist, <laughs> uh, usually with like a huge NPM packages, uh, with, uh, which introduce like 100 of new problems. So uh, yeah, let's ask ourselves where is the problem. So uh, to, uh, to actually um, answer this question, uh, we have to uh, know how, we, how do we handle uh, side effects in JavaScript. Uh, as you probably know, uh, we handle JavaScript, uh, JavaScript asynchronously with callbacks. And what is the possible danger of using callbacks? Of course, the callback hell. <laughs> so nesting, nesting, nesting. Uh, and the, the huge problem with nesting callbacks is actually the code readability. And why is this important for us as developers? Maybe if we are like one developer team and we are creating a big, really small application, this is not a huge problem. But imagine that there are like a bunch of developers, let's say 10 developers, which are working on the one solution. And they are cooperating. And one of them will, creating, will create something like this. <laughs> and another one has to debug it. It's like a huge mess. It's awful. So there is something new. I mean, this is not that new, because it's uh, part of a standard nowadays. So there are promises. But if you take a look on promises pretty close, you come to the conclusion that, well, it's still nesting problems, problem, right? It's still the same. Like, try to nest another promise. Uh, this is pretty hard, right? And uh, with promises, there com comes more uh, like uh, API, so we can uh, we can use the all uh, method for promises. We can uh, do the race of promises, so that we can catch uh, errors really nicely if we do uh, like one or two uh, nested promises. But there's still one problem existing: its uh, ability to cancel promise. It's actually impossible to cancel a promise. So uh, let's go to the second section of my presentation and possible solutions uh, with uh, React. And probably most known uh, solution by you here. Oh, Whoa, where am I going? So it's a Redux tongue. So raise your hand who wherever use Redux tongue. Yeah bunch of people. <laughs> so how it works, actually. It's pretty easy. And uh, thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, Boris, we actually know already how it works. So there is an action creator who, uh, thanks to Redux tank, can return a function, which will be operated by tank middleware. And uh, in this uh, function, which we uh, return, which is actually a kind of callback, we can uh, do some fetching some data with, uh, for example, promise. And then we, we can dispatch uh, um, an action with success, or, uh, or we can catch an error and dispatch uh, console log an error or dispatch uh, an action with an error. Um, another possible solution, which, which actually works with Redux tongue, is, of, of course, Redux promise middleware, uh, which uh, which give us some kind of factory uh, above uh, the Redux tank. Because if we uh, pass the promise in payload, our, uh, prom uh, our Redux uh, promise middleware we are, we, we will uh, create and dispatch actions for us. So if there will be a, a promise in progress, we will get an action. Uh, if the promise will uh, resolve, we will get an action. And of course, if the promise will reject, we also receive an action. Uh, OK, so I have, uh, of course, there are another possibilities, but I have a question for these ones, because those are like so ready, so ready to use solution to do asynchronous uh, fetching data. And uh, they work pretty well. But uh, actu uh, actually, question I asked myself is where we, where we should 
handle a thing in React? Where is the, the best place for handling them? There are people who, say, who would say, oh, we can do this in containers, uh, like in, in components. There are people who can say, hmm, we can handle them in action creators. And they're also kind of right. But for me, it was, wasn't enough. I want to have some kind of separated place where I can easily handle, and I know, and all developers in my team know that there will be uh, all the async operations uh, in my project. So, and another question I asked myself is to, how to write easy, easy to understand uh, async code? Because I've, as you've probably seen before, nesting, nested promises are pretty hard to read. The same uh, refers to callbacks. They're pretty hard to read, pretty hard to debug. Uh, maybe we used to them, but still, uh, I had like feeling that we need something more. And uh, I asked again, if, are we looking for some kind of superhero leap? Something like, I don't know if there is something else, or can it's possible to have something more than just the read of three decks tongue and like really basic uh, async operations. So actually, yes, <laughs> yes, we can have Redux Saga. And OK, so here, here is our uh, a normal um, Redux uh, operation. There is an action which goes to the dispatcher and uh, then to the store, to our reducer. So how Redux Saga connects with this? Really, really simply. <laughs> so it's just Redux Saga, which is working, I would say, in the parallel, because we, we apply our Redux Saga as a middleware, but we all actually run, uh, run uh, uh, Saga as a parallel um, generator, and it starts to listen starts to listen and just uh, react on any action uh, it actually listened to. So it's pretty simple. But what? What? <laughs> what? It's that simple? It's possible to have like sync operations made that easy? I, I don't get it. <laughs> so what is under the hood? And now, <laughs> thanks to um, Prelegans before me, like Boris and Michelle, who already said a little bit about middlewares and generators. I will introduce to you the simplicity of generators. They are so simple, so obvious, so beautiful. The syntax is really, really synchronous. So it's something which we used to write, right? Because there is a function which does some action and Every line of this code inside this generator is actually executed asynchronously, but still written, written in a synchronous way. So the syntax is really simple. Do you agree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, the, the whole possibility of writing the generators this way is uh, thanks to, of course, uh, the yield keyword, which, uh, which pulls generator every time we uh, execute yield and return or call or execute something which is after the yield keyword. So we, will, we do yield, do something, and then the regenerator pulls until the, the execution of the next method of the given generator. Simple as that. So let's take a look how our uh, previous example of promise will look with generator. Ta-da! <laughs> it's pretty simple, right? There is just uh, fetching, uh, fetching data, it's called fetching data, and then another yield with called call and fetch another data. So this is how it looks with Redux Saga, but before we go to the like a, re a real example of uh, Redux Saga use, let's take a look on Redux Saga effects. So we have a bunch of them. 
Redux Saga comes with uh, many possibilities and many uh, really useful effects. And they are separated into three sections. So first of them is uh, are the events re related to dispatch, to the actions. So we can put, uh, which is actually a dis uh, put to action to dispatcher. We can take, which uh, uh, eff uh, this effect listens to the dispatcher and uh, uh, react on, uh, on dispatched uh, given action type. Take every and take latest, which are really, really important and useful. And they're also listening to given uh, action type, but uh, also um, react to every action possible with dispatched or only the latest one and ignore before, before um, dispatched actions. So another section is to manipulate. Manipulate other generators. Uh, so there, there are a bunch of, a bunch of really huge uh, amount of uh, effects. I, I just took a look uh, on the most important, one, important ones. <laughs> so we have a uh, call which call the generator and uh, pulls our another generator uh, and waits until the called uh, function generator or um, something else executes. Then there is um, a special one effect, which is a fork. And fork gives us many possibilities. So fork is, as it's called, you, you just take our generator on the fork, so you have reference to it. And uh, you have reference to generator, so you can possibly, for example, cancel it. So yeah, you can cancel asynchronous uh, operation with uh, Redux Saga. So there is, a, as I mentioned, cancel, which actually under the hood executes the uh, return method of uh, of the generator. So it just um, uh, returns uh, finish the generator. Uh, there are also like um, many others uh, possible effects. One of them is delay, and uh, delay uh, helps us to delay async operations. This is sometimes uh, useful. For example, if you want to do the debounce uh, in Redux Saga, so if you want to debounce uh, action of fetching data um, or uh, saving data, it's, it's uh, really useful for input, text inputs. So if you're writing write something and you want to immediately save it to the, save, to the server, and you want to do this with the bounce, you can just set the delay of one, min of one second, sorry. <laughs> so uh, when user stops typing, you just wait a few seconds and then uh, dispatch the uh, execute the save method. Uh, of course, there are many more, like, uh, the sections of uh, manipulating the state. So you, you have a really easy access to the state of your uh, application. You can select um, the state of uh, many reducers uh, in your saga. Of course, it depends on you. Um, OK, so we, uh, we went through the effects uh, of our Redux saga. So let's try to do something. <laughs> let's try to cancel our saga. And it should be just simple as that. First of all, we need to create a generator to handle some operation. As you probably noticed on my previous slides, there is a really easy, a really easy um, a syntax for that. So we, do a we create a generator in which should update some data. And inside, we just yield uh, some, uh, some functions. Uh, next we have to create another generator which will um, handle for us and dispatch, dispatch action. So it, it will listen uh, to the request action type. And then if the uh, action will be dispatched, it will simply call the up, uh, update that data generator. As you probably noticed, there is an endless loop, which is pretty quirky. So why the endless loop in generator? So you have, to take, you have to think about it that this generator has to work in the background like all the time. So to actually make it possible to work for this, for this generator, 
not just finish after first uh, uh, taking action, we have to do the loop, which will make it possible to just take another action it will, if it will appear. But don't take it like, uh, like the operation which actually works all the time behind the scenes, because this is a generator. So be, uh, it will be just paused and wait. So it's, we, it will not be working like all the time. OK, so the first step would be to actually not call our generator, but, but fork them, to have the reference for the instance of generator, and easily console it if uh, the task is already there. So as you can see, the syntax is pretty simple. We just have a task, and if the task is, uh, is there, we just cancel the task and then fork another generator. OK, but what if you want to catch the problems, catch the errors in our generator? So here for the rescue comes try and catch. And again, the syntax is really, really simple. We just try to do our action in generator. And if the error appears, and it's not only about errors uh, which comes from the, for example, for example, XHR request or a fetch um, operation, it will catch also errors which uh, appear in the generator itself. So any JavaScript related errors will be catched here as well. And then we can just easily dispatch them to our uh, reducer and simply show user some, uh, some, uh, that some problem occurred. Of course, we can, uh, of, of course, we can implement some kind of repeat the, the call in the generator for a few times, like, like rebounce our um, operation to try again. But we can easily just show our users that something occurred, and they just have an option to reload. OK, what about testing? So once again, testing is pretty simple. Testing is simple because we have syn uh, synchronously like written code. So this is how we test it. We don't need to mock anything like promises or stuff like that. Uh, for the case of this slide, we, I, I used Jest test framework. And as you can see, we have iterator, which, will, uh, which is actually our generator. And then in every, um, in every test, we just go through iterator, through our generator with all next operations, and simply check. If our generator uh, called some service, if our generator dispatched some action, simple as that. So let's sum up. What do we have? We have Redux Saga, which is really, really, really understandable and the readability of, of this code is really huge. Another thing is that we can do a lot with Redux Saga. We can cancel them, we can debounce, we can throttle them, we can uh, as well try to um, retry the requests for amount of times. And, but we have to remember one thing. And I don't recommend using Redux Sagas for like a really small, simple project. Let's always consider, if this is something that I really need, if, do, do I want to, do I plan to uh, write really complex async operations? If yes, then use Redux Saga. I really recommend it. And thank you.